Has it really only been two weeks now? It feels like I've spent half my life on this river. We are rafting day after day, and we still haven't even reached the end of it. After each corner, I expect to come across a town, or at least a house. But there's none of that here. Just the river, the trees, and the mountains. Pure copper costs 4 euro a kilo. That means 4,000 euro a ton. And assuming that 30% of this mountain is copper, this mountain is worth... Uh, how heavy is a mountain? Right now it would be Sunday night back in Germany. Or is it Monday? Damn, I'm gonna miss the finale of Germany's next top model. I totally forgot about it. What would I give to watch it right now? Wow, is that moose watching me? Maybe I'm the first human it has ever seen. It doesn't seem to be scared of us, even though we're in a big group of people. Us drum kids and the Gwitchen. Let's see if I remember correctly. There's Ashton, Gladys, Jeffrey, Murr, that's Daniel, and her... No, I forgot what her name is. I really should know their names by now, because they're the only people around. Oh, and of course the developers, but there aren't many of them. They aren't many, but their plans are going to have a huge impact on the land. That's why we're here. Doing what we can. Making a sign. Holding our ground. Well, this stupid dancing won't change anything. I'm glad no one's watching. This trip really sucks. Fortunately, I applied for this trip, because I've never seen real wilderness in my life. In Germany, sadly, there's no places like this left. down the Snake River in northern Canada. It is one of the tributaries of the Peer River. Together they form the Peer River watershed and it's about the size of Austria. There are no towns, no people, not even a single road crosses this area. It is one of the largest untouched wildernesses on the planet. This land, guarded by mountains, is the native land of the Gwich'in people. Beautiful, isn't it? Unfortunately, the land is being carved up by 10,000 claims for open pit mining. The mountains are rich in uranium, coal, copper, zinc and many other minerals. These minerals are very important for society because they are used to make a great deal of the products you use every day. Mining is always a big mess, especially uranium mining. It pollutes the water and causes irreparable damage to the whole ecosystem. In order for the mines to be built, roads are needed, settlements, airstrips, and power plants. So most of us don't know where our comforts come from and what the costs really are. These remote areas vanish silently one after another around the globe. The Gwich'in didn't want to stand still as their land slipped through their fingers. This is why they invited us, the people that benefit from these exploitations. So we had to pack our things together to see for ourselves what is at stake. With the help of Wildlife International, we were able to get sponsors for the trip. At that point, we didn't know what is waiting for us, so we took a lot of things. Do I take this one or the smaller one? But this has got, row, row, row your boat. We don't need all this junk. We're not moving over there. Oh, man. It was in the middle of the night when our packing was done. And as they say, every journey starts with a first step. Summer's day in 
shepherd's town An eagle in a thermal is a circle now Like a tire on a bike rolling down Columbus Street But Katie got a little look of hope in her eyes And her arms unfold as she looked to the skies And said, I'm gonna learn to fly around with you, yeah She jumped up high and she fell on the ground in skin We met the Gwich'in students, and surprisingly, they weren't so different from us. Definitely not what I expected. And here we are together, ready for the wilderness. But real wilderness is hard to find. There's no sign like untouched wilderness down the road, And when the road ends, there's only one way to go further. By plane. Oh, I love flying. Oh, I hate flying. All the other children used to laugh at her. They say your hands in the cards and then you come back to earth. The men of the white coats, they were on the way for you. Wild reindeer, uh, caribou, whatever. And that could be the Snake River down there. We must be getting closer. There it goes, our last connection to the civilized world. So, this is the place we came for, the Snake River Valley. Now that the acre of the airplane is gone, it all went quiet. It's getting dark soon. We should find a place to set up our tents. Where did I put my raincoat? Oh, this is a tent. Um, uh, okay, how does this bit go? No. Oh, okay, okay. This, oh, this must go then. There, here. Uh, how did they get theirs up so quickly? Oh, okay. That, that goes on the top and uh, um, this should go here. Uh, or maybe not. Okay, but it doesn't look right. I, I mean, shouldn't this be... <sighs> So this is why we're here? Okay, stop. Come on. 
It's raining for hours, I'm jet lagged, I'm cold, it's wet, my tent is leaking, and that guy is drinking the last cup of coffee. It couldn't get any worse. Tom, that's a grizzly. Oh shit, holy shit, shit, shit. Where is it? He's big. You don't want to mess with him. I think he has I should have brought my machete. Now I even lost my shoe. How am I supposed to save the world with only one shoe? I didn't know what to do. Should I run or fight? Why do they all make such a fuss? Of course we'll see a bear on this trip. We're in Canada. Besides, the chance that a bear attacks a group bigger than three is below 7%. Strange. It's all good when we look at the wilderness. But the moment it looks at us, that's a different story. Then when you fire it, the explosive goes out and then it explodes again up in the air and usually that's enough to shoot them away. Never shoot it at the bear because the flare travels about 100 meters so what it will do if you shoot it at the bear is it could go over top the bear and explode behind and the bear would run straight at you. Always shoot it straight up in the air and just make the noise. And you don't want to have to, to shoot him. It's a beautiful animal. Ah, I still see him really. See? He's way up there almost. You see, you see a, like a green line? I just lost. Ah. So that's the reason why the bear came into the camp. It's all because of a wolf and a caribou? The wolf has the caribou cornered in a bit of a canyon. Caribou's uh, quite injured on his back leg. He's already been, been tagged a few times by the wolf. So, so the caribou's just gonna, has to just stand there and wait for the wolf to make a move. And eventually the caribou will get so tired, the wolf will just come in and, and that'll be lunch. What the wolf started, the bear's gonna finish. And we're right in the middle of it. We have to leave this place. But more importantly, we have to leave it just the way it was before. Has anyone seen my shoe? We are moving camp sooner than we expected, so we have to learn how to paddle, and fast. There's an odd vibe here. These trees remind me of the Mount Creek Woods. In 1978, a group of teenagers got lost in the woods surrounding Mount Creek. They say there was something else out there in the bushes following them, hunting them down one by one. Some say it was a human, others say it was a wolf. It started as a fun trip. But a week later, only two returned. That, floating down the river. Oh no, it started. Okay, you don't go if you hunt the rock.
Looks like we are not alone. We're gonna have to stay here for the night. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Ah, oh, man, I've got that damn song stuck in my head. How am I going to recharge my iPod out here? And why am I here in the first place? It would be nice and warm back in Dresden. I could hang out with my friends right now. I miss the streets, the good food, the people. So, why do I miss the city so much? Everyone else is having fun. After all, it's not so bad. It really, really excites me that we're running out of toilet paper. <laughs> because now we're going to finally start the camp. Okay? Now let's talk about how we do this, okay? We have um, a little bit of moss. Also, what's missing right now is grass, and I love grass. If you take the grass and you want the long stuff and you fold it over, okay, it will make a nice little kind of pad, and then you just wipe away and you throw it in the hole, okay? I would start with this, okay, because you're going to get a little dirty, then with a bit of grass, and then I love finishing off with a rock. <laughs> and really, and really, in some cases, size really does matter. <laughs> if you see me going off over there with this in my hand, you know it's serious. Okay? <laughs> my last tip, and, and, and your rear end will thank you for it. Before you go and use these, go down to the river and wet them and get the dirt off, okay? You want a nice smooth white. <laughs> okay? I guess Gladys has a better use of these stones. She makes the place more beautiful. Finally, the expedition has started and we are leaving the camp. We are like an early group of pioneers as we walk in territory no one has trodden on before. But when they sing all day, that ruins the expedition. We'll never see any animals at all. Maybe they won't notice if I stay a bit behind. Ha! <laughs> There's movement! So there are animals around here. Oh, and over there. Uh, that... that is... Ah, bears! It must be a bear family with two... no, three cubs. That's a lot of mouth to feed. I bet the others totally missed that. And there's another thing up there. Oh, he's close. I should warn the others. But he seems quite comfy. Ah, and these caribou. Beautiful antlers. It's only some weeks until they gather for the great march throughout their land. I really would love to follow their tracks. Walk when they walk, sleep when they sleep, and maybe they'll accept me. And throughout the land I'll be known as Jago, the man who walks with the caribou. Jago! Ja, 
Jakob, come over and have a look at these plants. And what are you called? Lidin Miskit. 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 Yeah. Miskit. Miskit. Yeah. And there's some that are that are bigger. And those are medicine. Can you make two of them? It has a like an oily film over it. So there's two different kinds. It's very important to know about these plants because the Gwich'in have a plant for every purpose. Earlier generations used the lichen to make beds or for coloring their clothes. And it's so dry. It is amazing that the caribou are able to live off it for half a year. In winter times, they feed on large amounts of the shrub lichen. There are many different kinds of lichen living on these rocks. Different shapes and different colors. They grow so slowly that when you walk over them, your footprints will be left behind for a long time. Because of the cold temperature, all the plants take a long time to grow. Therefore, you must be aware that you don't take too much. The Gwich'in only ever picked as much as they needed to use, so they would keep in balance with nature. I didn't know that orchids could grow in the Arctic Circle. Whenever we pick a plant, we give Mother Nature something in return. Well, in this case it's just a small sample of tobacco, but it's the thought that counts. Together with the Gwich'in, we want to find out more about the medicinal quality of the Arctic flora. So we must make a concentrate out of all the plants we've gathered. These samples will then go to a lab where they will be tested by chemists to see whether they can be used for any purpose. You know, 3,250 people die every year because they do not check the water before they jump into it. Who cares? Happy it's my 18th birthday and I can tell this day is gonna rock! Now that the sun is out, I think we are all going a little nuts.
We all made it. No, two are missing. Gently down the stream Merrily, 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 merrily Life is but a dream Row, row, row your boat Gently down the stream Merrily, 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 merrily Life is but a dream Team awesome! Good day! Every evening when we come ashore there are these special moments at the campfire that I don't want to miss. Although I know these guys just for a week, it feels like we are a big family. And suddenly I realized how precious these small things could be. I mean, you can't take a picture of an experience. The taste of a hot chocolate s'more after a long day of rafting. Sleeping on a mattress of golden flowers. Walking through this virgin land, losing track of time. It is amazing how much an experience can change if you only change your mood. Got here, it was a pretty wet, so I thought of a little idea to make this. This is my creation. <laughs> this was made from two good chins on board the first NWP. Anything they can do, I can do too. Well, it might take me a bit longer. And I really should go to bed. But these nights around here, it's the only time I can think clearly. When there are no lights to dull the sky, the whole of the Milky Way opens up for infinity above you. It makes me feel so small and insignificant, like I'm just a small grain of sand in this huge universe. Compared to the stars, I've got such a short life and no way of changing anything. Well, anything really important anyway. No matter what I do, I have no effect on the rotation of the Earth, the orbits of the planets, or the positions of the stars. It makes me wonder sometimes, what's the deal? When I'm really so insignificant, then what does it matter what I do? Or what I care for? Take this trip. In 2000 years, what does it matter whether the land has been preserved or mined away? The stars don't care at all. But I care about them. And there are less and less spots on Earth where you can see the stars as bright as this. And I think I'm not the only one who would miss them.
Morning, wake up and can see more sunshine. Come and get breakfast. We camp at a point where two rivers meet. One is the crystal clear snake river that we drink from every day. And the other looks like dirty industrial runoff. Are these the first signs of a mine upstream? I guess there's only one way to find out. I have to check its chemical compositions. For control I need a sample of the Snake River also. Unfortunately out in the field I can only make some basic tests. Oh. It seems that the Milky River is far more alkaline than the snake. I assume it has something to do with the source. Over a long period of time the wind deposited mineral dust on the snow-capped mountaintops. Due to the rain last week the ice started to melt. So the water rushing through the land is now very rich in minerals, especially calcium. Therefore it is very alkaline. This creek runs down very quickly, so the minerals stay in the water. Meanwhile the snake has a long way through the valley, so most of the minerals sink down to the bottom, while the rest are filtered out by the stones. After some time the water is so pure, there is nothing in it. Well, besides these sweet elements. The girls are another indicator about how clean the water is, because they wouldn't do this at home. Maybe this method is not so scientific, but I like it. This water is old glacier water and is one of the purest waters on earth. You could call the Snake River the heart of the entire ecosystem. I don't like this romantic description, but I can't find a better word for it. Because it has supplied the animals, the plants and of course the Gwich'in people for generations. The Gwich'in call this area the land of the painted mountains. And as we pedal through it, I finally realize why. These striking colors are due to the high deposit of copper, zinc and uranium inherent in the stones. It's obvious why this land is so attractive to the miners. Around here all the minerals are visible on the surface, glittering in the sun. You could reach out and just grab a handful of coal or iron stone. And yet, it seems to me that the real value is not in the minerals at all. We really got used to our time in the wilderness. It is unfortunate that it has to come to an end. The Gwich'in invited us to build a sweat lodge. The Native Americans perform the ceremony to clear their heads and find direction. For all of us, it is a privilege to participate in this ancient ritual. Twenty-eight stones will be heated in the fire at the entrance to the tent. These stones are called the oldest of our relations, 
the grandfathers and grandmothers. Because even though the landscape is shaped by the river and the trees grow up and die, the stones remain the same through the ages. comes from the glowing stones in the center, the air thick with exotic herbs. We are all huddled together. I can't see the person next to me, but I hear him breathing. Nearby the river is giggling as it trickles over the stones. the wind dancing with the clouds far above our heads. And even the trees across the water are whispering old tales. The land has its rhythm and for the first time I'm actually able to listen. I have never heard this voice at home because we took our landscapes away. Louder noises took over and the faint singing stopped. rock in here, a fossil rock of a snail shell. I was probably here a million years ago. I found it there at our last stop break. And just half hour ago, 45 minutes ago, I was walking by the fire and I found this one. Another fossil. I don't know, I think it's a fossil, but I don't know. I was guiding one of the rafts. I I thought I might as well have some fun and spray water on one of the other guys, Chris. As I was looking back, hitting the water with my paddle, I felt two hands on my back. And I got pushed straight into the water. My camera got wet, my digital camera. So I took my memory card out to let it dry off. And another big guy, Tom, he jumped in the raft. And Tom and Sean started wrestling. And I guess my memory card of 400, 400, 400 pictures was lost. My camera was broken. I figure since that happened, in return I got these rocks. This one from my digital camera and this one from my memory card. And hopefully I find one for my watch. It's time to pack down the tents. The motorboats have arrived to take us back to civilization. Because we can't paddle the whole way back to Fort McPherson. Seems like the whole town is waiting for us. Mo showed me around the city. For him, it was just coming back home. But for me, 
it was like traveling through time. One moment we were in the prehistoric wilderness, drinking from the river, striking stones to light a fire, and in the next moment we were surrounded by electricity, houses, and cars. With every waking moment, the wilderness feels more and more like a distant dream. To be honest, I'm a bit shocked about my cliché thoughts about First Nations people. I mean, they've developed the same habits like we have. Nowadays, they take more from the land than they really need, because their values have been changed, their original culture suppressed. And yet, it seems that more and more of them are becoming aware of their traditional roots. Hopefully, the knowledge is being carried on. I'd never thought that this trip would have such a big effect on me. But I think we all learned something really important. Well, maybe not all of us. I've got it. I can do it. Look at me, jigging Jacob. <laughs> Come on. In all this excitement, I forgot what has brought us here. And it is easy to forget about, because there are no signs of destruction and pollution around us. I do not know what the future brings, but I am glad that I could have seen this landscape as it is. And I hope it stays like this for a long time to come. Oh, man.